Here's your wrestling news for April 29th, 2021. And if you like what you're watching, smash that like button and give us a thousand likes or more. And your headlines for today include NXT referee in trouble after worrying video goes viral. Latest plans for WWE to bring back fans revealed. They told me women's wrestling doesn't make money. Recently released superstar hits back at WWE. SmackDown superstar blasts WWE for bad booking. How did Braun Strowman make history on Raw? Where will SummerSlam 2021 take place? I started choking him out. WWE Hall of Famer reveals backstage fight with Eddie Guerrero. I'm a huge Goldberg mark. Raw superstar details embarrassing tattoo story from his past and more. We're starting today with NXT, and whilst it's usually the gold brand superstars making headlines, this time it's referee Jake Wirtz. In the past, Wirtz has garnered controversy for promoting hard right and QAnon conspiracy theories, and now an appearance at a public meeting has caused quite the stir. In a meeting of the Seminole County Board of County Councilors, Wirtz promoted the QAnon theory that masks are a part of a conspiracy aiding predators to prey on children. Wirtz argued that the use of a mask mandate has helped child predators and squeezed out some tears during his speech. On Twitter, fellow ref DA Brewster posted a facepalm emoji, seemingly in response to Wirtz's comments. Wirtz did not offer any data or proof backing up his claim, and this isn't the first time he's showcased this behavior. Earlier this year, Wirtz appeared in a photo of NXT refs who all posed with their fingers in a three count, whilst Wirtz used a symbol associated with white supremacy, and given his knowledge of QAnon conspiracies, it's unlikely he didn't know its meaning. Fightful are reporting that Wirtz promoting unproven or disproven theories has affected his career as he's no longer the head ref in NXT. The report notes that he's also been passed over for several key roles, including both match timer and backup timer, and was temporarily suspended earlier this year and barred from the Capitol Wrestling Center. It's reported that when he returned, Wirtz toned down the behavior that got him in so much trouble, though we doubt his behavior this week will do him any favors. One person doing much better is Jason Jordan as the former Raw Tag Team Champion is excelling backstage as a producer. This week, Jordan got a huge promotion, as with John Laurinaitis now taking control of the talent relations department, Jordan has been promoted to Johnny Ace's former spot of lead producer. Referee John Cone, who was briefly removed from his role in talent relations last week, is now second in command to Laurinaitis, and PW Insider report that the firing of Mark Carano encouraged WWE to bring Cone back to the talent relations team. Adam Pearce has moved up the company ladder in recent weeks, though his new official title hasn't been confirmed. Fans will still see plenty of Pearce on WWE TV, and time will tell who moves where next in WWE's ongoing backstage reshuffle. For the past year, WWE has had to continue without live events, but with much of the US reopening, fans could soon be filling arenas again. PW Insider reports that WWE are planning to start with some test live events this summer, Though this, of course, is subject to change given the ongoing situation. Their report reveals that WWE is looking to start this in July or August and are closely observing how new waves of cases have played out internationally to help them decide when to run these tests. Given that these plans are still new, WWE haven't locked in any dates or booked any venues, but if things keep improving, fans may not have to wait long before attending a WWE event once more. One person fans won't see at live events is Mickey James, who was cut from the company two weeks ago. Speaking this week on Gaw TV with Lisa Marie Varon, aka Victoria, and SoCal Val, James discussed her latest run in WWE, which included them turning down all her pitches. She explained, There was this moment where I said, what if we do an all-female brand? If I could help lead up that and have an awesome team of women, we have the talent, tools, and facilities. This one person says to me, they're never going to do it, ever. Women's wrestling doesn't make money. WWE Evolution was the lowest rated pay-per-view ever in WWE. I get what you're trying to do, but I don't understand why you're fighting so hard for it. James didn't specify who in WWE said this to her, but it clearly goes against the women's revolution WWE has touted for the past six years. Speaking about the trash bag incident, James said that Vince McMahon personally called to apologize for what happened, adding that the fans were more offended than she was. 
She also explained that WWE may have gotten the wrong person in firing Mark Carano, explaining, The person who is responsible for me feeling like and trying to devalue me or sabotage me or make me feel less than is still very much employed. As a veteran of the ring, there's plenty of promotions who'd be happy to sign James, but they'll have to wait until her 90-day non-compete clause expires. Two people also released this month were Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, which came as a huge blow to the WWE roster. By all accounts, the Iconics were wildly popular backstage, as Carmella has made clear. Speaking on the Bella Twins podcast, Carmella discussed her brief team with Kay, saying she was looking forward to showing her fun side, and added, Those two were some of my closest friends since they got here, so it was the first time I was really rocked by a release. We'll have to see what the Iconics do next, but their release has left quite a hole in WWE's women's division. Last week, Peyton Royce filed a trademark for her post-WWE name Cassie Lee, and now her best friend has got her own new name. According to Heel by Nature, Billy Kay registered a trademark for the name Jessica McKay on April 23rd, and this was filed by Michael Dawkins, the self-proclaimed gimmick attorney who's filed a ton of trademarks for AEW and other wrestlers. Jessica McKay is the former superstar's real name, and fans can expect to hear a lot of it from now on, given that Billy Kay is still owned by WWE. The Iconics weren't the only topic of discussion when Carmella spoke to the Bella Twins, as the SmackDown superstar also called out WWE for their handling of women. Speaking about her run with James Ellsworth in 2017, she said that at the time, WWE could fit three women's storylines onto a two-hour show. As to now, fans often have to wait until 10 p.m. on a three-hour Raw to see their first female. We'll have to see if WWE changes how they book women, especially as Carmella has only appeared a handful of times since the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, but the former champion isn't happy with how things are right now. One person fans can see plenty of is Braun Strowman, who recently re-entered the WWE title picture scene and set an impressive record on this week's Raw. On the show, Strowman started his night facing Mason T-Bar in a handicap match before teaming with Drew McIntyre to face them in a tag team match and ended his night beating McIntyre one-on-one, -on -one, earning a spot in the WWE title match at WrestleMania Backlash. The Twitter of WWE Stats and Info have confirmed that Strowman is now the first person in WWE, WCW, or ECW history to have a televised singles, tag, and handicap match on the same night. On May 16th, Strowman will compete in a triple threat match and will no doubt look to topple both McIntyre and Bobby Lashley to become the new WWE Champion. As WWE's COO, Triple H is unsurprisingly a very wealthy man, and added to that wealth this week by selling off some stock. According to SEC filings, the game disposed of 37,115 shares valued at $55.60, earning him $2.06 million as the King of Kings continues to make big figures despite his departure from in-ring competition. The game is no stranger to competing at SummerSlam, and WWE is planning on this year's event happening with a live crowd. It's been previously reported that Phoenix, Arizona and Texas are being considered, but we know that Boston, Massachusetts, which was meant to host SummerSlam 2020, isn't being considered. Fans were hopeful when Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker announced that the latest reopening guidelines will start on August 1st, which would mean sporting events could return at full capacity before SummerSlam. Now, Boston's Mayor Janey has said that her city will wait an additional three weeks, meaning that Boston's return to normalcy will be August 23rd, the second to last Monday. If Boston hosts SummerSlam, it must now happen on August 29th, and it's far more likely that WWE will choose somewhere without so many things working against it. In WWE history, there's few names more respected than the late Eddie Guerrero, and whilst he and Kurt Angle were good friends in real life, which helped them to put on a classic at WrestleMania 20, they didn't always see eye to eye. Speaking to Hannibal TV, Angle recently spoke about a backstage fight with Latino Heat, which took place after a SmackDown segment where Angle, Luther Reigns, and Mark Jindrak gave Guerrero a beating. He explained, I didn't touch Eddie, but they did. I guess they laid into him pretty hard and he came backstage, he was mad and he approached me and he said, why did you lay into me like that? I said, Eddie, I didn't touch you. And he said, I did, and he pushed me. I said, don't push me again, and I pushed him back. He tried to double leg me and it wasn't that hard to fight him off, me being an amateur wrestler. 
It was pretty easy and I put him in a chokehold and started choking him out. The Olympian explained that it was the Big Show who ultimately broke up the fight and it goes to show to never try and out-wrestle a gold medalist, not even if you're a former WWE Champion. AEW News next and Jon Moxley is set to defend his IWGP United States title on Dynamite. On the May 12th episode, Moxley will defend against the legendary Yuji Nagata in a match Moxley requested, and this relationship between AEW and New Japan shows that the forbidden door is opening even further. Back to WWE and Randy Orton is a man who loves tattoos, and this week the former world champion spoke of some ink he thankfully didn't get done. Speaking on Kurt Angle's show as its first guest, the Viper admitted to being a huge Goldberg fan in the late 90s, so when he turned 18, he wanted to emulate some ink from the former Universal Champion. I'm 18 and I'm a huge Goldberg mark. I go to the tattoo spot and the tattoo artist, I tell him, I say, I want this tattoo, and it was a picture out of a magazine. The tattoo artist was like, oh, you don't want to put another guy's tattoo on your arm, and looking back it's like, thanks tattoo artist. Though Orton didn't get Goldberg's exact tattoo, he did get something similar, which he's tweaked with over the years, and whilst his mother, who banned any tattoos, was no doubt unhappy, at least Orton wasn't walking around with another man's ink. And we're ending with AEW Dynamite, which has aired on Wednesdays since it began, but that was recently at risk thanks to Turner buying the TV rights for the NHL. Ironically, it was the belief that NBC would buy these rights that led WWE to move NXT off Wednesdays, but AEW fans won't have to worry about tuning in on a different day yet. Speaking on Busted Open Radio, Tony Khan said that AEW has a contract for the Wednesday night time slot, which has two and a half years left on it. Khan also explained that if there was an opportunity to move nights that he'd consider it, but only if it was a really good deal for AEW. As for now, fans won't have to worry about AEW moving nights, though things could be far different in two and a half years' time. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.